It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and my special co-host, Miss Kelly Ellis. Oh, she's not here. <laughs> she hold, she's gonna go fishing with, my, with her uh, master and they're going to take the boat with his girlfriend and they're gonna go hit the waters today. Today is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. And um, so they, yeah, so they're gonna go fishing. So Callie won't be in the show right now. She may be in later on, we'll see. So today we're out at one of my gardens and this is the one I've been doing now for over five years. And every year I always do something new and different. Or I add different colors, I add different uh, textures, I add different plants all together. I still have some of my regular perennials coming up every year. They just love them and I just love them. I got some new irises that started to bloom this year and uh, let's see what else. The um, Chinese lanterns that I did last year, perennials, they just multiplied like crazy. Just tons of them. Oh, they're going to make such pretty, gorgeous fall bouquets. They're like a long, thin stick, and they have these little, tiny, bright fluorescent orange looking pumpkins hanging from them. Like, um, oh, not paper mache, but um, like Chinese lanterns, you know, you see in the uh, uh, restaurants. That's because they look like they look like paper, like tissue paper almost. And there's just multiple hanging of these little orange, orange pumpkins. They're just beautiful and make gorgeous uh, fall arrangements. Anyway, so we're going to be doing the hanging baskets. Yay! <laughs> just got to be careful I don't slip off the ladder and break my foot again, like or dislocate my foot again, like you know what was that? Two or three years ago? Three years ago? Yeah. <gasps> Remember that one? Oh my lord! I had it in the cast for ages. Anyway. So what we did last year was in the hanging baskets, I had vinca and it was pretty, but it, it was a trailing vinca, but it just didn't trail. I wanted it to hang more, you know, so I'm always experimenting. I just don't want to get the petunias because you got to deadhead those all the time. But there's a new one out now called a beltunia that you don't have to deadhead anymore and, you, and it's full sun and you can just let it go and it'll, it'll trail down. You don't have to worry about pinching off all the uh, dead flowers because it just multiplies on its own. Well, I didn't get that because they were, they are expensive. I think they were, what, five, I saw them for $5.99 just for one, you know? So I need eight, you know, so it's, things can get pricey. So I have to try to keep, I always want to try to keep my budget. They don't care, but I do. I just don't want to, you know, overly spend where I can do something and make it myself, you know? That's why they hire me, because I have my talents. So what I did was I bought one flat, and they're called flocks. Now, it's not the uh, perennial flocks, but they look like the flocks. They are a annual flocks. And they come in, and this here is a multiple color of, a, of that came in the flat. So you can see I got purple, and there's red, and there's fuchsia, and there's white, and there's a white with a purple swirl into the leaf. So it's many different colors that blend in. And it's, these are going to be hanging down more. Hopefully, these will be just absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And I took, and it was a flat of 48, so I got eight, so I got six in each pot. But that's going to leave me with the center open, because I want these to hang and droop. So what am I going to do for sun? So I need to have something sun. I wanted to do vinca regular flower. Vinca, not the vine, but the flower. 
They kind of look like impatience in a way, and they come in a wide variety of colors, and they are drought resistant, they are bright colors, and if you forget to water, it's okay because they can go for like three or four days without being watered and still uh, live. And those would be perfect for here because I get the sun reflected off of the patio and off of the pool, off the water, directly hits up there and directly hits down. So where they have the hanging baskets, it gets a lot of sun and they dry out so quickly. So what we're going to do is I took and I mended the soil and I just took a wheelbarrow to do my mixing in. And I did the miracle Grow Moisture Control Potting Mix. Now this has those little polymer beads in it, which we talked about before earlier, that are going to retain the water so it helps it keep it from drying out. And then you forget to water, it will help to maintain the moisture in the soil. Now I also took and added those, the, the little packet I have with those crystals, which is more of the polymers, and I sprinkled those in. Oh, oh, that's okay, didn't spill. In with the dirt mixture. So now we got the polymers in there and the crystals, so that should hold in a lot of water. And I took and I heavily watered these yesterday, because that's when I planted them, and now the soil is nice and moist, and it has a chance to drain out. You don't want to take and uh, overly water, you want to make sure you have good drainage in your bottom of your containers, not because some of these pots are solid. You want to make sure you have drainage holes in here, like I have on the bottom here, so that your water can drip through. If it doesn't, and you have the standing water in there, it's going to drown your plants and they'll die too. So you got to make sure you have good drainage. I also took and put some rocks, like gravel, even off of the uh, driveway or something, you know, or even rocks. Some uh, that are washed out from your lawn, whatever, anywhere, and we just get, you can go around the area and just pick up some rocks. And just little rocks to put on the bottom of your container. That way the dirt ain't going to be compacted to your drainage area so that the rocks are there and the soil's on top of that. That'll help the water seep through and drain better so you don't have stagnant water standing in there. Okay, now we got all that taken care of. So what are we going to put in there? Well, I decided on getting some dahlias. Now these are called a Dalanovia. And what the Dalanovia is, it's, it's the Dahlia, but it's uh, smaller. It's not gonna, it's not a dinner plate Dahlia, so it's not gonna get, you know, <laughs> six feet or something and big, huge blooms. It's gonna stay small, the Novia meaning small, little. And so we want these in the center of each of our containers. Cause we wanna take, I want it, to, cause they like full sun. So this should, boom, boom, be absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so what colors do I have? Well, these are orange, and I got what I could choose from. So I got orange, orange, so I got four orange, two yellow, and two fuchsia. So we'll put an orange on each end of set of four, because I got the middle empty, so we got four on each side. One, two, three, four, yeah. So I'll put an orange, on each side, on each end. And then we can do a yellow and the fuchsia, one in each. Now let's see. Bright brings out, makes it wider, so the fuchsia should go on the inside. So next we'll put, so we'll put so the second one, yellow, yellow, Fuchsia. That'll be the darkest and that'll be towards the center ends. Second from the end, second from the end. There we go. So you got orange on the ends, a set of four, orange on the ends, and then yellow, and then fuchsia. Okay. So well, all we have to do is plant these. Now remember to, when you plant, Uh, you want to harden off your plants. And what hardening means is getting this plant from the greenhouse to be the temperature of your outside area, which these are already hardened, they're already good. When it's colder out, that's why you don't plant right away. You take your plants and leave them outside so they can cool down because you had the hot greenhouse. The shock from the heat to the cold is going to kill your plants, it really will. It makes them, and people wonder, how come I just bought them? They died on me. Well, 
you didn't harden them off, you didn't give them a chance to get used to the outdoor temperature. But now our outdoor temperatures are about the same as the indoor temperatures, so these are already fine. And if you went to a garden house that had these already outside, then they're pre-hardened. If you buy them, you know, like in their little parking lot or something, those are already hardened off for you because they've got used to the temperature. So these are all ready to go. And remember now too, to break open the bottom of this root bulb because it's all bound together. You want it to breathe and get a chance to grow out in all directions inside the pot. So these we can put right in the center. Everything's all ready to go. Just got to dig a hole, plant this in, push that in towards the bottom, and then take and put the top soap back on top. And that'll do that. So I'm just going to take and go around and finish off planting these, and then we'll get back to hanging them up. This is where I'm going to have to hang up my baskets all along the top of this of these pillars. I'm going all the way around here. And I got my ladder over there. Now I got them all filled. And now I'm going to get some water with a water soluble fertilizer to water to fertilize them first before hanging them up. Okay. So now this is the first one. And this is the red, or the orange, Dalnova. And I'm just putting in a little bit of water here. The soil's already nice and moist, because I watered last night. But these dahlias, uh, Dalnovas, uh, need to be rewatered because they are dry, they've been sitting out. So I just want to make sure now I get these colors in order, which I did, because I, I want them all to be the same. Oh, better get up there. Now, if I should happen to fall, 911, please. <laughs> I don't think anybody's home to help me. There we go. Now I can remove the tag. Oh, this one goes on the outside. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wrong side. Goes over here. Not quite. There we go. <laughs> I should have treacherous music playing now. Doo -doo. <laughs> so that was the orange one. Now I can take out that uh, marker. I just wanted to make sure that we have the markers in there so that we could get the right colors. Because I want it to be in a pattern, you know, to make it look neat, not just randomly thrown up there. So you can tell that, you know, I put some planning into this. So then this is the yellow one. Now if you want to, which is a good idea, and I haven't, I forgot to bring them from home, but I'll do it later is to take your cable tie strips, you know, those lock strips, and drill a hole into the top of your little plastic hook here, which I already have. Slide your cable strips in and then around to your metal hook and fasten it and lock them into place. One, it's gonna keep people from stealing, which you don't have to worry about here because we're way out in the middle of the boondocks. <laughs> but 
The second, because that's like if you have them on your porch or something, people in town and that, people do come in at night and steal them. I know it, I've seen it done. So that would keep them from stealing the plant, the pot. The other thing is, it acts because it's locked on that, it's really an excellent idea for when you have thunderstorm, big winds, everything else, and these are gonna start rocking and whoosh, 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 and they might fall off and crash, and there goes your pot and plants and all that work and time and money. So the lock strip will keep it in place and locked into that metal hook so that a day the wind doesn't blow it off. It's a really good tip. And you just got those cheap little cable stops. You can get a whole bunch of them at the dollar store. I mean, they're really cheap. And then when I, after I slide it through, then I just take and cut off the excess strip there so you don't see that hanging there. And then I'll just go through and finish piling or hanging these up. And then we'll get back to look at the final product. Apparently, I think I got dirt all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have our hanging baskets with the flocks that are going to be draping down, coming down, and the dahlias in the center to stay up there to give a nice bouquet of color to, to make it look full on top, and hanging down will be the flocks. So these are very simple to do that you can do yourself. You can get the hanging baskets at the dollar store, very reasonable. Uh, some places, greenhouses, we even give them to you if you can find them in their recyclable containers because some people bring those back the next year because they're not going to do them again. So you can just pull those out for free. Some places have those. So it's very inexpensive. Getting the flats of flowers yourself is cheaper than buying individual ones or having somebody make them up for you. And you can just look how reasonable I got. $20 for the flowers and that for the flat. And then the dahlias were 5, 10, 15, or another 40. So that was $60 for just the plants. And I already had leftover dirt and I already had the containers from last year. So it was only uh, 40, 60 for plants. That was it. And normally one of these pots will sell for about 25 to $30 at the greenhouses, at your flower markets. So, you know, so say 30, that's eight, you know, eight, 20. That's $240 for plants that I just did in 60 bucks. Save a lot of money doing it yourself, and it's fun. Because I just love to garden, you know that. So enjoy, and as the season progresses, we'll come back and do some updates too, so you can see how beautiful they're getting. So uh, let's go on to our next project, and that's gonna be some container gardening up by the garages. up at the garages and I have these two containers one here and then one on the other side of the driveway we got uh, two garages here and I just started putting these out last year because I found these empty pots in the garage with the with the wrought iron stands and it's like they never had them before I've been here five years now they've never been put out so I thought well let's just add some more color you can find your old uh, containers that you put away in your garage and your attics or even at flea markets, garage sales, and just put them anywhere. There's always flowers, there's always blooms, there's always greenery to add accents to your property anywhere. So it doesn't matter if it's shade or sun, you can always find plants that can bloom in the shade. For your shade plants, we have uh, impatiens, uh, coleuses, uh, that's colored leaves. Uh, you can have begonias, the big begonias, and the little wax begonias. And there's many different flowers that you can put into the shade. And green, you can do hostas. You don't always have to take and put annuals in a container. You can put perennials in there too if you want to. And then at the end of the season, just take them out and transplant them in your yard or in your garden somewhere. They make wonderful accents and color. So there's a lot of choices. So now we're going to take and do these containers. And what I decided to do was to get these um, uh, New Guinea impatience. 
I like the big flower on them and they're gonna get bigger and better, you know, as the season progresses. So I'm gonna put these in the front. And because I want it to look, you could, do, you, know, a, you could do symmetrical and have it all even around, but no one's gonna be able to see from the back. You know what I'm saying? It's not like if this was in towards the center or on a patio and you had chairs on both sides, you know, and this is between your chairs, then I would go symmetrical. But since this is against the wall, I'm going to go asymmetrical, which means everything's going to be on one side. So I want to put my impatience, my new guineas, in the front here. Now the soil, I already took and mended, and I did the uh, moisture control soil because these pots really dry out in the summertime. When we get that hot heat, this has to be watered at least three times a day. These are just terrible for soaking up water. This is like pure sun all day long. So I needed to put that moisture control in and I put in the crystals too, the magic crystals. I put those in there too to add more moisture to the soil. Remember now, break up that root bulb. That's all bounded in there from being in the greenhouse. You want that to, roots to grow out and grab up more moisture, nutrients, etc. So now for the back here, I've got these uh, multicolored coleus, which is uh, magenta with a lime green edge. This is going to be really pretty contrast. So I got only have four of these in each one. Now, what I like about the coleus is that they can don't get to be huge. They can get really big. And I'm sure you've seen those Kong coleuses. Well, your regular ones that you buy like this in the flat will get to be that big eventually, you know, towards the end of the season more. But you can buy them already that big if you want to. But then you're spending $5 just for one of these little plants. I mean, I got this whole four pack for $1.69. Come on, this, you know, it's gonna grow uh, anyway. Now those car ones, the, the ones that are already grown up and big, you're gonna notice that they're gonna start to flower right away or very soon. And they get a little stem to it. Uh, gets a long stem, little seedlings along there. And what you wanna do is pinch off that stem completely. Don't let it go to flower, otherwise your coleus is gonna die early. Because once it gets pollinated, it's telling it's the plant you're done with, you know? <laughs> you're already fertilized, I got your seeds, let's, you know, your life's over. So, what you want to do is pinch off those seed pods, the flower when it comes up on the coleus. That's going to take and make the plant last longer. Also, with the coleus, if you take and uh, as it grows up, start pinching. When it gets to be about yay tall, I'm going to start pinching the top. And that's going to stop the seed from even growing. And it's going to make it bushier. And then wherever there's a branch, more leaves are going to come out. So it's going to be really thick. As the season progresses and we come back to look at everything to see how it's growing and before I pinch it, I will show you and let you know how we do that. And it's just very simple pinching off the tips. People are so afraid to pinch off the tips off their annuals. They're like, oh, you're going to kill the flower or it's not going to bloom as much or whatever. Relax. It's going to bloom even more, even your flowered ones. You pinch off that tip top after it's like about three to four inches and it's going to start spreading out on the growth is going to go out to the sides to make it more thicker, more fuller, more bushier, and you're going to get a lot more blooms then. You don't have to pinch it every single time. You just only have to do it once and that's going to just make it, bit, make it thick. So we got this one done and then we'll just go over and do the other. Now the other thing too before I forget is where these are located, they happen to have irrigation system throughout the area. And now we got these drip lines that they just attached last year, which come in so much handy. And this just drips, drip, drip, drip slightly. So this is going right into the center of the pot and under the leaves of the plant here so you can hide it towards the back. So that this will take and, and water the plant so I don't have to worry about watering it constantly. I'm still gonna water occasionally with fertilizer and just to make sure that it gets fed every so often. But this, if you can afford to, or if you can hook it up, it's an excellent idea. So for Miss Callie and I, wherever she is, uh, happy planting and we'll probably be back and do some more.
Well, welcome back. Now we're going to do a chore that nobody likes to do. <laughs> Weedy. Oh, look at all this. This is around the garage, and this is like wild woods right here. I mean, right here. These woods, this is the wild. They got deer, turkey, everything going right through. Boom, boom, boom. We're out in the middle of the boondocks here. And so, no matter how well you weed and spray, seeds are going to come in and weeds are going to take over. We got tons of thistle this year, just tons of it. It's just unreal. And you can go through and spray everything, but my tip is to have you to do it by hand because if you spray all this, it's going to cost you a fortune because the plants are so big already. So the easiest way is to take and just pull by hand. But make sure you wear gloves because this thistle, you're going to burn your hands. You know how that goes. And it's prickly and it just burns. So you want to make sure you have gloves on. Other thing too is this time of year when you start to garden, Make sure your tetanus shot, you have a booster that you've had your 10 years. It's only good for 10 years. Now, I just had one, oh, when was my last tetanus? Uh, two years ago. So I'm good for another eight years. But whenever you're working out in the garden, you never know where you're going to scratch yourself on a rose bush, on thorns. Uh, you might cut yourself by pruning, etc. So it's always better safe than sorry. So if you haven't had a tetanus shot in over 10 years, it's time to get another one. So that's always a good tip. I know. <laughs> Then it feels like somebody punched you out for a week. Oh, I know, it just kills me. Oh, that hurts. The shot itself doesn't hurt. It's the after effects. It feels like somebody punched you out for a week. Oh, it's so sore. But then after we pull, then I'm going to go through and spray everything, which would be much cheaper, and just get areas where small saplings are, etc. So, from Miss Callie and myself, I just want to say, eat healthy, be safe, and spread the sunshine, and happy gardening, everybody. Bye-bye. Da 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 da